Okay, now I'm going to look at the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is an amazing book. Seems like it covers every single subject known to man. If you want wisdom, then read the book of Proverbs. You see Jesus Christ in Proverbs because he is wisdom. And the man who wrote the book of Proverbs is one of the wisest men who ever lived, if not the wisest man, King Solomon. However, Jesus is better than Solomon. Luke 11, 31 says, The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. So you see that Jesus is greater than Solomon. But you can find Jesus in the book of Proverbs as Christ our wisdom. 1 Corinthians 1, 30 says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. So Jesus Christ, our wisdom. The key expression in the book is the fear of the Lord. That is the beginning of wisdom. This book has 31 chapters, 915 verses, and around 15,043 words. And since the book of Proverbs shows us a wise man and a foolish man, Let's look at some characteristic characteristics of a wise man that you will find in the book of Proverbs. So, Proverbs 1.5, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So, one of the first things you see about a wise man is that he will hear. The fool can't hear because he can't stop talking. When someone else talks, he's running through his mind what he's going to say instead of listening. So therefore, he learns nothing. The wise man will hear and increase learning. The more you shut up and listen, the more you will know. But we're living in a time when men have heaped to themselves teachers having itching ears. The only preaching they listen to is Joseph Prince, Francis Chan, Joyce Meyer, Stephen Furtick, Rob Bell, and watered-down preachers who never touch the Bible. A wise man will hear. He will hear the Lord and his word and in preachers who preach his word. This will cause him to increase learning. He will grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, Proverbs 9.8 says, Re Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man and he will love thee. So if you're wise, then you will take a rebuke like a man. When someone rebukes you on the job, just see it as a way to get better and improve. Love the man who tells you what you need to get fixed, even though it could be a lost man telling you what you need to get fixed many times. Many times the person repro reproving you is a hypocrite. He is someone who needs to be reproved more than anyone else. However, most times when he reproves you, what he's telling you is right. So you might as well just fix whatever you're doing wrong even though the reproof is coming from the wrong person. Truth can come from anybody. So if you see it as the truth, then just fix it. Whatever it is that you have going on that's wrong, you need to fix it. <clears throat> Proverbs 9.9 9, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet be wiser, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. So a wise man gets wiser from instruction. This is because he isn't full of pride. He doesn't believe he is above being instructed. He doesn't believe he already knows everything. Many times I've seen young guys on the first day of a job act as if they knew more than the old guy who had been on the job for 25 years. Instead of the old guy training the young, young man, the young man starts training the old man. This is because they believe they are above instruction. Or you hear the classic saying, I just don't like everyone telling me what to do. However, that's a part of life. God has put authority figures in place and expects you to abide by authority with God being the supreme authority. You're going to have an authority figure throughout your life everywhere you go. Proverbs 10.1, the Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. So if you want your parents to be proud, then make wise decisions. If you're living wicked and causing your parents to be tore up 24-7, then
then you're going to reap what you sow. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. So there are millions of mothers who are constantly grieving over their son or their daughter who's on drugs or in prison and living like the devil. You will reap how you have treated your parents, the trouble you, that you've caused them. Psalms 10.5 He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. A wise man will actually get out of bed and do this thing that is foreign to people today, that is, move his body. A wise man will work. A wise man will set an alarm, get up early, pack a lunch, come to work, do his job. You would be shocked to know that the average man won't do that today. He is lazy. And I probably see at least five people a month that come into work a couple of weeks and then quit or just flat out miss every day until they get fired. People are lazy today. So, uh, Proverbs 10, 8, The wise in heart will receive commandments, but a praying fool shall fall. A wise man will open the Bible and see that God has commandments to live by. He will receive them knowing that God is wiser than him. But a fool becomes his own final authority. A fool will change God's commandments to fit his own beliefs so that he can live his life however he wants to. Proverbs 10, 14. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. A wise man wants to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He would do what he can to consistently get a deeper knowledge of God. The foolish man's life revolves around putting things in his mouth, making sure he can eat. The foolish man's life revolves around TV shows, music, movies. His life revolves around Hulu, Netflix, Xbox, and Redbox. Proverbs 10, 19, In the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. <clears throat> so the quieter you can be, the better. But there's a balance to it. You want to open your mouth to give the gospel. You want to open your mouth to edify others. For most other things, though, the quieter, the better. Proverbs eleven twenty nine: He that troubleth his own house shall inherit the wind, and the fool shall be the servant to the wise of heart. So the wise man turns out better in the end. Verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth, winneth souls is wise. If you're wise, then when you look into the eyes of another person, you don't just see an, an object or just nothing there. You see something eternal. A wise man realizes that the things of this life are temporal, and there are two things you need to concentrate on during this life that are eternal. That is, the souls of men and the words of God. These things are eternal. And he that winneth souls is wise. Do you see that soul inside of that person? I mean, you can't see it, but when you look into their eyes, you know it's there. Do you see that as something that needs to be saved and it's something that's going go to go to hell or heaven when they die? He that winneth souls is wise. Proverbs 12, 15, The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Do you automatically think that you're right and everyone else is wrong? Do you never listen to the words of people around you? He that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Men that are older and more experienced can give you counsel that will only make you wiser. Hearken unto counsel and you'll, you'll be wiser. Proverbs twelve eighteen. there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Some people open their mouth, and everything they say is, the, is a knife in the back of another person. There is he that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. That is where you get the saying, he stabbed me in the back. So hold your tongue. The quieter you can be, the better. If you have a bad thing to say about someone, then just keep it to yourself. The tongue of the wise is health. It doesn't backbite. It doesn't slander. It doesn't false accuse. It doesn't cause trouble or sow discord. 
Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So a wise man hangs around other wise men and becomes wiser. A fool hangs around other idiots and becomes even more of an idiot. Proverbs 14, 3. In the mouth of the foolish is the rod of pride, but in the lip, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Notice a lot of being wise is connected with how you're using your mouth. Proverbs fourteen sixteen: A wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. A wise man understands that fear can be a good thing. Teach your children to fear foolish things that people do you know this can keep them out of, out of so much trouble it doesn't make you a sissy to fear because you know god can allow bad things to happen to people if you're doing foolish stuff proverbs fourteen thirty five: the king's favor is toward a wise servant but his wrath is against him that causeth shame so wise men obtain favor of kings Proverbs 15, 2, the tongue of the wise uses, useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. So a wise man knows how to use the knowledge he's compiled. The fool destroys you with knowledge that he has compiled. There are a lot of foolish men who lead millions of people astray with knowledge he's compiled. He knows how to use his foolishness to make you dumber to make you reject god for example there's a lot of very smart atheists he's still a fool and he's going to use the knowledge he's compiled to pour out foolishness to make you a fool if you listen to him proverbs fifteen twenty four: the way of life is above to the wise that he may depart from hell, hell beneath so a wise man considers that there is a hell Proverbs sixteen fourteen: The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. A wise man can use words to pacify wrath instead of making things worse. A lot of people, when they see someone's angry, they'll just fuel the fire, make him more angry. They'll see he's mad at another person, and they'll say, Well, that person also said this about you. And just make the man even more wrathful. But a wise man can use words to pacify wrath. Proverbs 16.23 The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth and addeth learning to his lips. Proverbs 17.10 A reproof entereth more into a wise man than an hundred stripes into a fool. So learn from the reproof that you get from somebody else. Proverbs 17.28 Even a fool... When he holdeth his peace is counted wise, and he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. Over and over again, it seems like the less you talk, the less foolish you're going to look. Proverbs eighteen fifteen: The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. So constantly learning. A wise man is constantly seeking knowledge. Proverbs 20 and verse 1. Wine is a, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So this means 99% of country singers are fools, and everyone who listens to them only gets dumber. Proverbs 28, 7, Whoso keepeth the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of righteous men shameth his father. Like that verse said, A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Evil communications corrupt good manners. But this has been a quick overview of the book of Proverbs. And it's a great book if you want wisdom. Just go through the book. Try to do everything it says to make yourself wiser. And abstain from everything it says the foolish man does to make yourself less foolish. We all do foolish things. We all can be fools. So let's try our best to just do what the wise man does. Look to Jesus Christ. It's Christ our wisdom. That's how you see Jesus Christ in the book.